All right, people, it's a new week and I'm trying something completely new with the podcast and that is to bring it out of audio and into the visual world. Um, This is terrifying for me. I never thought I would do this. It's a lot of freaking work, but I have so many crazy videos and visuals and pictures throughout this time that I've decided I'm going to document the out of this entire thing. So you might be watching this on YouTube you are hopefully listening to this and um i hope that we have a good time here i don't know how it's gonna go this is my first one so thank you for joining me all right well welcome back to the facing fear podcast this is a show where i your host sarah mcinerney hawk interviews other individuals who have faced fear in pursuit of their own definition of success and while remaining unapologetically authentic. I have been doing this for almost two years and I have built this entire brand, website, castle, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, website, everything around facing fear. And then the world turned on me and said, bitch, you're up. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in October of 2021. Yes, the irony of being diagnosed in the middle of breast cancer awareness is um, quite a f***ed up experience. (laughs) Um, But you know what? If this journey was meant for me, then so be it. I'm going to make the best out of it. And you being here to listen and be a part of this journey is what helps do that. So um, cheers, my friends. Let's get this started. So much to catch you guys up on which is why I'm really excited that I'm making this podcast a video one as well, because there are a lot of visualizations, photos, videos that if you go watch this on YouTube, which of course I am linking in the show notes, you'll see a lot of the behind the scenes here. And as I mentioned, my mission with this show has always been to face fear and break the stereotype that scary stuff should be put away or swallowed down or kept in the back, we should bring it to the front and fucking face it. And it turns out that um, I'm getting a very real taste of my own medicine as I go through my own breast cancer diagnosis. (coughs) Oh God, (coughs) sorry. I'm rotating between wine and water because that just sounds like a very Jesus thing to do, but also because I need more water than wine if I want this episode to be any worthy quality, but this is the first time I'm putting this on video. So I need a little liquid courage. I'm, I'm not above that. Let me just condense my entire journey and bring everybody up to speed. If this is your first time hearing this show, which thank you so, so much for being here. I was diagnosed in October, 2021 after many tests and results, it was determined I would have a bilateral mastectomy Prior to the bilateral mastectomy, my husband and I went through a round of IVF. We will be IVF parents and it was successful for us. So we're very, very lucky in that, um, in that way. I had my bilateral mastectomy in January of 2022 during the surgery, they found more cancer. Um, it's still breast cancer, which is good. It doesn't, it's not spread anywhere else other than my lymph nodes, but that means I have to go through chemo and radiation. At this point, I have gone through one round of chemo. So let me tell you about that experience, which so many of you have asked, which thank you so much for asking. So let's start with chemo Eve. So chemo Eve, AKA, you know, Christmas Eve, but a lot less of a fun word (laughs) for me was Wednesday, February. Let me look at a calendar here. February 16th. So two weeks ago, Wednesday, February 16th was my chemo Eve. And I decided that I was going to go balls to the mother walls. And honestly, it was just how I live my normal life. Um, it's usually a really jam packed schedule. I work in an office or I work from a remote location or at home. I usually have multiple appointments, people to see things to do. And it was really nice because So I had my surgery January 12th and my life has kind of, no. Okay. So I had the surgery January 12th, but two weeks prior I had to quarantine. So my life has been at home shut down this whole year, this whole 
year. Like I got back from a Christmas vacation trip and my surgery team was like, "Mm, time to be indoors and not around other people. Because if you miss this date and you get COVID, we don't know what to tell you. So my life has been very uneventful for the terms of like normalcy. So anyways, chemo Eve, I decided to make the best of it. So I got up early and did my little exercises. Then I went to dry bar and had a dry bar appointment. Dry bar, if you are unaware, is a hair salon where they only do wash, massage, dry style. They don't do cut, color, nothing. And I really wanted to go to dry bar because in two weeks after my surgery, I went to a friend's wedding in Chicago and I couldn't lift my arms. I really couldn't do much. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to make my girlfriends do my hair. Like I'll go to a salon and have it done for me. And I went to this salon, which looked totally legit, but the experience was trash. (laughs) Like right out of the gates, it was so awkward because I had like four different individuals working on me in a matter of like 20 minutes. Like it was weird. And I just, the management seemed really bad and off. And so it it was just not a good experience. And then because the hair experience was so bad and they knew it, they offered to do my makeup for free. And at first I was like, but will you guys though? Like, will you do my makeup? Cause I'm not really sure about your abilities based on this hair experience, which is what I've paid for. And so I was late. I was almost late for the wedding. So I said, okay, sure. Do my hair or do my makeup. Sorry. And I looked like a guidette, which um, for those of you who did not grow up with Jersey Shore, that is someone who is overly tan. And I can tell in the photos of me and my friends, there's like a group of like 12 of us. I can tell one does not look like the other, (laughs) but nobody else could tell. Everybody was very nice. I fixed my hair in the bathroom at the wedding. It was just all around, not a great experience. And here I was wanting this experience because seven days prior, I had found out that I was going to have to have chemo and radiation. And I have the type of chemo that is pretty killer, which means I'm probably going to lose my hair. So I tried to treat myself, didn't work out, hated it, bad experience. All right, that brings us all the way back to the future here. Two weeks ago, go to dry bar. And it was unbelievable. It was such a great experience. I rolled in there with gross, greasy hair um, because I was like, well, if they're gonna do my hair, I'm gonna like ride this out. So it was amazing. And it was so helpful to me right now because I can do a lot better job now, but even two weeks ago, I still can't like lift my arms and I just don't have like great mobility to get around my head with both of my hands. And so I was kind of avoiding washing my hair a lot because I just couldn't get like a thorough job done. So I go to dry bar. It's an amazing experience. They do the whole nine and I loved it. So I'm walking out with ball and hair. Then I went to work. And it was awesome to go to the office and feel totally normal and see everybody. And right now I'm working on a construction project for our fitness center. So what could be better than that? And when I left, it was the old gym. And now when I returned, we are almost done with it. So that was really cool to see that space completely transform. And I had a great time at the office. Everybody was so nice and, you know, saying nice to see you and you look great and all of that stuff. So that was really, really great. Then I went home for a little bit and then I actually had my first speaking engagement. As you can assume, someone who is a podcaster probably is pretty confident in their speaking skills. And so I also do inspirational speaking and workshops. And I had my first gig in the long, in a long time and I got this gig in probably November, and I remember thinking, hmm, do I tell this person who just hired me that I have cancer or not? It's this weird thing. It's like it's like being pregnant, but there I don't have anything to show for it because I look the same. And I decide, you know what? I'm not going to tell her right now. I'm just going to see how this goes. I should be feeling totally fine. I had knew, I'd known my surgery date when I got hired for this, and I was like, you know, I should be totally fine. I'm just, I'm just going to ride it out. And if I need, if I can't do it, I've got a lot of speaking friends who could take my spot. 
And so the day got closer and closer and I had not prepared for it because uh, I went to Florida for Christmas and then I came back and I had to quarantine and I was all mad about that. And then I had the surgery and then, you know, just a month after the surgery, I was so down. But I decided to keep the gig and it actually gave me something awesome to work on while I was down. So I put together this great presentation. I was hired by the children, Indiana, no, the Children's Museum of Indianapolis, wanted to get that right, to teach a program they have for high schoolers how to public speak. These kids are planning their own Rex Talks, which is a play off of TED Talks. There's a big T-Rex. Well, actually, is it a T-Rex? I shouldn't say that because I don't know anything about dinosaurs. But it's a play off of, you know, dinosaurs. And there's a big dinosaur statue at the Indianapolis Children's Museum of Indianapolis. Whew, I want to get that right. Um, and so, yeah, they're planning their own event. And so... I got to go to the museum after hours, completely empty. It was kind of dark. It was so cool to be in there when no one's in there. And I looked at a few of the exhibits as I made my way to the kids' classroom. It was just amazing. And I'm not going to lie. I had visions of the Transformer. They have the big Transformer. They have Bumblebee there right now. And the dinosaurs coming to life and um, having a good time with me. But sadly, they did not. So I did this speaking gig. And I want to pause right here because if you followed me on social media, I've been documenting God winks. And I think this was another one. As I mentioned, I had this gig for quite a few months, but then cancer interrupted and took over the headline of my life and my story. And I wondered for the longest time, should I keep it? Should I not? Should I keep it? Should I not? And I ended up keeping it. And I'm so glad I did. And honestly, one of my biggest fears in keeping it is I'm actually coming back again in April to help the kids um, critique their speeches. So I knew that they'd see me in February and then they'd see me in April and then I'm going to their event in May. And I'm about to change big time over these next few months. The side effects of chemo are outrageous. They range from A to Z. And then like add five things on top of that. And I wondered, you know, they're teenagers, there's young, there's, there's already a lot going on in the world. Do they need to be around someone who's going to come in and then maybe two months later be bald and look different or thinner or heavier or have eyebrows <laughs> or not have eyebrows? And I talked to the person who hired me about this and said, you know, I, I want to put the kids first. I want to, I want to make sure this is a good experience and it's not about me. And luckily she was so nice and compassionate. And she was like, it's whatever's comfortable with you. We hired you for a reason. It's completely up to you. And so I kept the gig and the God wink here is that we are more resilient than we think. I did a speaking gig 32 days after having a bilateral mastectomy. And I'm so glad I did. Sometimes you have to fake it till you make it. And, you know, were my hand gestures and arm like movements limited when I was speaking to them? Yes. In the back of my mind while I was talking to them, was I wishing I could lay down because my boobs literally hurt? Yes. Do they give a shit that I have fake boobs now and I may not feel and look the same? No. I was there to talk to them about something I'm so passionate about, which is facing fear of public speaking. And we had an amazing time and it was a challenge for me. And it was an exhausting, I think my chemo Eve, I was on the move for 14 hours, but it was truly the best thing I could have done because I know what tomorrow was going to bring. I know what it was going to bring. And so I'm so glad I put in the complete effort and had a normal, crazy busy day. So then it was the day of chemo, Thursday morning, the 17th. And it was just kind of one of those days where I felt like I did when I used to play competitive soccer. And we would have games later in the afternoon. You know, you don't really sleep well the night before. You wake up and the, the minutes just crawl by. 
and you're just ready for game time, but at the same time, you're really nervous of how you're going to do. And that's how I felt. But luckily I worked from home. I had things to do. I ordered myself Jimmy John's for lunch, which ironically took forever to get to me, which is very off brand. I need a little wine sip for that. Um, but it turned out they delivered it to my neighbor's house, which was weird. Cause like their map of picking out where my house was, was very specific, but Regardless, I got my Jimmy John's and it was fire. Absolutely amazing. I love Jimmy John's. I'm such a basic sandwich bitch, I swear. <laughs> um, so I got my Jimmy John's, I ate, and then I had my friend Tammy pick me up. And I want to tell you guys how I met Tammy. So after my appointment where I found out I was going to have to have chemo and radiation, I was obviously devastated, super annoyed, mad, pissed off. And I was with my mom. She was still here. And we decided on the way out of the cancer center to stop by the, you know, the cute little cancer store. And we go in there. We're just goofing around and, you know, saying how cute some of the stuff is. And to be honest, how ugly some of the stuff is. You guys know how I feel about chewiness, which. So in the cancer shop, my mom and I are just looking at stuff. And there's a bin full of pins and I love pins. Pins are so cool. And we're going through them and they're so unique. There were so many different ones and I'm going through them and I've just been documenting so much of this on social media and including finding cool pins. So I put this video on my stories and there was like a beer one. There was a heart one. There was a funny one. Like there's just all these unique pins. And one of the pins was these tiny little women on a, what looks like a dragon boat. So like literally imagine the body of a dragon, right? Like you've got the head as one side of the boat, the body is the whole boat. And then the tail is the other side of the boat. And there's women rowing this boat. And I put this on social media and I was like, I never knew I needed a dragon boat breast cancer pin. Like what the hell is this thing? And I had this woman respond and her name was Tammy. And she says, Hey Sarah, I've been watching your story and I'm a survivor myself so I can relate to everything you're going through. And I just wanted to let you know what that pin meant. And I was like, Oh shit. Did I accidentally make fun of something? I didn't mean to. Uh Oh, uh Oh. And she says, there is a group called the Indie Survive Ors. O-A-Rs, no pun intended, except for all the puns intended in the world. And it's a group that rows, so like rowing, like, you know, the Olympic sport, rowing, like rowing. And (laughs) rowing is a motion that's actually supposed to help people who have lymphedemia. Lymphedemia is when you have lymph nodes removed and your lymph nodes do not circulate what they're supposed to circulate as well. So you run a risk of having problems in your arm. For me, I'm like the number one candidate for lymphedemia because I had 26 lymph nodes removed during my surgery. So I'm like, oh my gosh, cool. Like would love to be a part of that in the future. I've never done rowing. What a cool, you know, opportunity to do that. And then she goes on to say, I've also been an instructor at Lifetime and I live in Fishers and, you know, just your story. I connect with it. You're awesome. Keep going. So, so nice. And we go back and forth. And eventually I asked her to Zoom just to get to know people on the internet better these days. You know, like if you really want to get to know somebody, just do a little bit more. So Tammy and I Zoom and she's literally the coolest. She is who I want to be in the future. She has this beautiful head of hair and she's funny and sarcastic and nice. And so it was just so cool to meet her. And Tammy, I hope you're listening to this. So shout out to you. Come to find out my friend KJ, Catherine Johnson knows her. And if anybody Ball State is listening to this and knows KJ, KJ's the coolest, sweetest person on earth. And so KJ used to be her neighbor. So I'm just like, wow, amazing universe connection. Okay. So bring it all the way back to chemo day. I actually needed a ride to chemo because Jacob was going to meet me there because he had to come straight from school. And I am doing some therapy right now. And this person's going to be a guest on an upcoming podcast episode. So wink, wink. And this person told me to be super intentional about everything I do and to be 
selfish about it. So I could have asked, you know, one of my friends or my neighbor to take me to this appointment. And instead I thought, you know what, let's, let's ask, let's be intentional and ask somebody who's going to bring that good energy, good vibes that they know I need. So I asked Tammy and of course she says yes. And so she shows up at my door and she gets out of her car and she's like, whoa, wait, I'm coming in and I have gifts. And this is the first time I'm meeting her. So we like quickly hug and she comes in and she gives me tulips and a balloon and chili, like, you know, chili to eat. And so nice. I'm like, oh my God, you did not have to do that. You're already giving me a ride. It's all good. So we put the stuff inside. I actually had a quick visit from Amber. If you guys remember Amber from a few episodes ago, I covered her story, which if you have not listened, please go back and listen to Amber's story. It's incredible. She's a realtor now. And she was like, Hey, I'm going to be on the North side on your first day of chemo. Can I do anything for you? And I said, you know what? We don't have any ice cream right now. I want some ice cream. So she, she got some ice cream for us and some other miscellaneous things I needed. So as I'm running out the door, Amber pulls up and I'm like, Oh my God, I want to cry. Like Amber's been my angel this whole time. And for her to arrive at that time with this little shit I needed from Meyer, that was so nice. So shout out to you, Amber. I hope you're listening as well. And so I get in the car and Tammy and I ride over such a great ride. She's just, you know, the coolest. And so we get out of the car and we go inside and I meet Jacob and We are greeted by these super nice volunteers who um, work on the cancer first floor. They have to ask everybody, oh, do you have any COVID symptoms? And then here's a new mask. So they've, they've got a big job to do. So we head inside and I kid you not, people, four feet into the building, we are walking in, Jacob and I. And he's dressed to the nines because at school it was dressed to impress day. And I always think my husband is hot, but he looks especially good on my chemo day. And (laughs) this woman is walking through and she compliments him and goes, oh my gosh, you have beautiful eyes. And I'm sitting there thinking, bitch, I'm the star of this show. Okay, keep it moving. (laughs) Wait, oh my gosh, hold on. I just realized that's not how the story went. Whoops. <laughs> it was Tammy who complimented him. Okay, wait, reverse. I'm in the car with Tammy. We're riding over. He got, he like met me at the door of her car. That's who it was. Okay, so it was, it was Tammy who complimented him. But anyways, it was just funny. Like later I was like, who do you think you are with your stupid, beautiful eyes? This is my day. It's my day shut up and carry my bags. So anyways, (laughs) Jacob gets that compliment all the time though from women. Oh yeah, beautiful eyes. And I'm sitting there with my poop brown eyes like, "Mm, okay, cool, 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 cool. (laughs) Okay. So, oh, I'll tell you guys what I brought to chemo as well. Just in case there is anyone listening to this, who's about to go through what I'm about to go through. I got to fix my hat. Um, I brought my laptop, my charger, in case we wanted to watch something. Although I'm at Community North, and Community North's cancer center is fucking ballin'. It has my own room, so every time I go, I'll be in my own room, and there's a TV in there. So I didn't really need to bring my laptop, but I didn't know what channels they'd have or whatever. So I brought my laptop. I brought... Um water, my cancer binder. Oh, uh, chew, chew stuff. Because sometimes when they do the infusions, you can like taste it, which is just, again, just the side effects are outrageous. Um, so I had Starburst, Jolly Ranchers and mints. And then what else did I bring? Oh, I brought a, um, the only kind of seltzer water I like is the ice stuff. So I brought an ice for myself. Um, but it turns out the cancer center has pretty bomb beverage and snacks. So that's exciting. I will definitely be taking advantage of those. 
And then I brought a blanket from my dear brother-in-law, Colin, who sent me a blanket. And when I got it, it, he was like the only person on the, like the gift note. And I thought, oh, he just, you know, Sam just put him on it or he forgot to put Samantha on it. And I texted Colin. I was like, thank you so much for this blanket and da, da, da. And then I told Sam about it. And she was like, yeah, you know, he did that on his own. He was, he was stressing over trying to get you a gift and wanted to find you something amazing. And so Colin, I love the blanket. So thank you so much. So brought the blanket with me and then that was it. So that's what I brought, you know, not the whole world, but some stuff. So we get up there and we check in and we're in our own room and everybody's so nice explaining everything, talking to us slowly. Nobody seemed like they were in a rush. It was just the best customer service possible in a scenario where you really, really need that. So one of the things I had to do, which is a memory I don't think I'll forget, is I had to sign a consent form. And that's what makes, I feel like, chemo so backwards is because most of the time when you go to the doctors, you are going to get something that's going to make you better. And chemo is not that. Chemo is very destructive. And so I had to sign, um, I don't know, it's going to make me cry, but I had to sign this consent form um, that outlaid all like the side effects and the risks. And, you know, of course they do a great job of managing them. So the risks are very low. The side effects are crazy, but the risks are low. And I think I'm getting a little emotional because I've signed consent forms before like this, but they are for when I have chosen to put my own life at risk, um, which would include skydiving twice, bungee jumping off the tallest bungee jump in the world in New Zealand. And those were fun adrenaline adventures. And I remember looking down at the iPad that the nurse was showing me and looking through it and signing it and just thinking like, man, like this, like, it's so frustrating that this is what I'm signing for. (sighs) Break for wine. And water. (laughs) But it's necessary. It's a necessary evil. And to give you like the short elevator speech of my chemo, I have a very basic chemo regimen, um, which I've learned through watching other people's YouTubes. I have this great book that I got from Amber. So my, my treatment is very basic, which is great. I have a really predictable cancer, so they know how to attack it. So I have eight total rounds and eight's my favorite number. So we're taking that as a sign. And they will be every other week. So essentially, I have four months of this hell. I have my first four rounds with AC. AC is commonly known as the red, D-E-V-I-L. I am choosing to call it the red soldier. And it is so given a challenging name because it is a destructor. Unfortunately, we don't have medicine that can detect cancer cells versus regular human cells. And we are made up of like a billion cells, right? And our cells are constantly growing and dying and reproducing to help our body do the things it needs to do. And so the red soldier can't tell what's a cancer cell or what is a regular person cell. So it destroys everything. And as you guessed it, our hair is a fastly reproducing cell. Like we we reproduce that all the time because we lose our hair all the time, right? Like my girls out there, how often do you shed? And so that's why people likely go bald. But it destroys everything. So there's a million other side effects besides hair loss. And so I'm choosing to envision this as the red soldier This is a female soldier, of course. She has great boobs. She has great hair. She has brown hair, like me. She is strong as fuck. She can do a handstand walk or a handstand push-up, whatever she wants to do. But she is making her way through my body to destroy any cancer I have left 
or any cancer that has traveled anywhere. And these chemo sessions are supposed to build on one another. So I have my second one tomorrow and we'll see how it goes. So prior to going into this day, as you heard earlier, I sell cancer merch and it's been really cool to do that because I've made art out of a really shitty time and I have so many wonderful supporters who have bought it. I have people who I don't know have bought it. I have people who have bought it as gifts for other cancer patients, which is honestly my favorite purchases because it has been my superhero cape to go in there looking fierce as f- and wearing what I want to wear because I can control that. I can't control so much of this, but I can control what I wear and that's been incredible. So I bring up the merch because I did a little call out and I encourage people to wear their merch on Thursday with me. So I could be at the cancer center flipping through my phone and see all of you. And oh my goodness. Did people show the frick out? It was so cool to see people in their merch, wearing their stuff, all the variety of things that people have gotten. I'd been like, oh, I didn't know she got that hat or I didn't know they got that sweatshirt. It was incredible. So I'm here on Wednesday to ask you again, can we do that again? That was so fun. If I'm going to go through this, I'm going to make the most out of it. And I want to bring you with me. So if you're listening to this on Wednesday, the day it releases, please wear your F cancer or fight cancer merch tomorrow, Thursday, March 3rd. I will be in my second round of chemo and I'd love to see you. So wear your F cancer merch tomorrow if you have it. Also, March 3rd is triple negative cancer day, which is a type of cancer that a lot of women have. So I'm going to hopefully post about that as well. So we can learn about it at at a later time. So anyways, back to my appointment. Everybody's so nice. I signed the consent form. Jacob's with me. It's all good. He was actually getting some schoolwork done while we were there, which was nice because it's really hard for him to take off. And it was just the best environment possible. Oh, Okay, so when I checked in downstairs, they said, oh, you're Sarah, we have a gift bag for you. And I was like, oh, okay. And the gift bag they hand me is huge. And I'm like, oh, this must be from someone. You guys can't possibly do this. And so I take the gift bag, I go upstairs. And my Aunt Joan had told me that she knows the interim director of the cancer center. So I was like, oh, it's probably from her. Um, And her name escapes me right now, but I'll open it when she comes to visit me. Cause aunt Joan had said, Hey, I told her about your appointment. Can she come visit you? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. So she comes in and it's so nice to meet her. Really cool to hear about kind of her side of her role in the organization. And just, we gabbed on and on about how great aunt Joan is. And I said, Oh, is this gift from you? And she looks over and she's like, Oh no, it's not. I'm like, okay. So she leaves. Um, Jacob and I get some alone time after they do some of the pre-meds, um, which I feel like I am educating myself, but everybody else as I go through this. So I know it takes a lot of explaining, but I feel like if I were you as a listener, I would want to know, um, pre-meds. I want to explain those to you. So nowadays they are able to do such a better job at managing side effects and symptoms thanks to pre-meds. So every time I go, I get my weight taken, I get my blood drawn, all these things so they know how I'm feeling. And I actually journal every day how I'm feeling. And I have that going, which is really great. Um, So they give you these pre-meds and then they have to sit around for like 30 to 40 minutes. So the pre-meds goals are to help you after and during. So you're not sick. So you're not throwing up. They told me if I have my head in the toilet, I should call them. Um, which is really great because I feel like in the movies and what you see a lot on TV with people with cancer is like super thin and bald and sick and miserable. And I'm happy to say that science has come a ways and they can do so much more. So super happy for that. So pre-meds anyways. So she leaves and I open the gift and the gift is from freaking Tammy. 
she planted the gift. Like she must have gone from her house to the cancer center, dropped off the gift, got me at my house and then gave me a ride. So Tammy, you were just ridiculous. And the gift was incredible. Absolutely incredible. The gift also had this little, like, it's called a marshmallow pillow. It's like this really soft, gushy pillow. And it's in the shape of some like unicorn creature. And I was like, oh, you know, (laughs) I don't really keep this kind of shit around my house, but okay, thank you for this pillow. Well, it turns out that pillow is amazing and it sleeps with me now because it's the perfect thing to cuddle and to like hold my boobs in place because I can sleep on my side now, but uh, not really at the same time. So um, anyways, This pillow has a tag on it. And the freaking pillow's name is Archie. (laughs) And if you know my family at all, you know that Archie is very significant because it is the name of my sister's previous dog that is now my dad's dog. And Archie is the first and only dog I've ever loved because... Okay, sorry, I got distracted. There was somebody backing into a driveway across from us that did not look safe, but they made it. Um, Archie is significant because he's the only dog I've ever loved because he's very hypoallergenic. So this f***ing weird (laughs) pillow's name is Archie. So huge universe, amazing, amazing, amazing sign. Okay, so... Then the red soldier comes in and the nurse has to put on a whole outfit for it. You guys, it's crazy. Um, it's very toxic. So for 72 hours after my sessions, Jacob and I are not allowed to exchange bodily fluid fluids. Um, so, you know, no making out, no other things as if we were doing that. I'm just not ready yet with my boobs. Um, but anyways, uh, so she has to put on this whole outfit and the stuff is red. It's these huge syringes of red stuff. And one of my friends, um, was asking me about it. And truthfully, I put pictures of it on social media and I sort of regret that because I think I was just on like a, high of, I can do this. I got this. I'm a superhero. But when I think about that redness color going into me, like it gives me anxiety and it kind of makes me want to throw up and I have no desire to throw up right now. It's just weird. Like why is something red going into me? All of our medicine is usually clear, you know, especially if it comes from a syringe. So It's red, which is why it has the name it has. And actually, none of the nurses really knew why it was red. Um, So I guess I'll have to continue to research to find that out. So she goes through those. um, And then there's some more medication and more stuff to be dripped through the IV. And then we're done. Um, And honestly, the first appointment went by really fast. Oh, wait, I I skipped this part. Jacob and I got some snacks. I had Doritos. He had Lay's barbecue chips. Um, But like what great snacks, right? So I'm always going to plan on having snacks there. Um, And then we left and everybody was so nice. Like when we walked by the front desk of the actual like chemo center, everybody was like, congratulations on your first one. Like way to go. So that was really, really nice. So God bless anybody who works on a chemo floor, um, your positive attitudes and niceness go a long, long way for those of us, um, literally walking two feet forward into hell. So thank you. (laughs) Um, I went home and I actually took a walk later in the day. Chemo doesn't hit you immediately. So especially the first one. So I felt good enough to take a walk and all of my survivor friends have told me that, um, Taking a walk is like the best thing you can do. Try to stay active. So I did. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, definitely felt it. Super fatigued, nauseous, dry heaving, no throwing up. Didn't know what I wanted to eat. Um, I took two naps a day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then, yeah, that's really all I felt. Just laggy. I had blurred vision at night, which is normal. I mean, I mean, nothing's normal, but it's a side effect. So it wasn't like freaking me out. Um, and then Monday I was just hazy Tuesday, hazy, just felt slow. I actually went to my office on Tuesday and just felt like, 
like I was walking around with like bugged eyes. Like people were louder than normal to me. The colors were too much. I kind of wish I was wearing sunglasses. So yeah, that that's just kind of how my first experience was. And then Wednesday turned a freaking corner, felt completely normal, so much energy. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all the way up until now, which is it's Wednesday again, uh, felt completely normal, energetic and who, you know, you don't know what you got till it's gone. And when I felt bad, I felt bad. And then when I felt good, I felt really, really freaking good. Um, and it's just so funny because I am a huge athletic fitness person. And normally my standards are like a 60 minute workout a day. Right. And now my standards are like, get out of bed. And I'm so happy. Like, I can't believe how happy I've been on the good chemo off days that just really makes me appreciate the simple life. Absolutely. So before we go, I'll tell you some other fun things that happened, um, including wig shopping, going to physical therapy, and going to a really awesome dinner with a friend. So Wig shopping. I went wig shopping on Sunday and all my survivor friends have told me just go while you feel good, while you feel fine, get something now, just so you have something when the time comes, if your time comes. So I went wig shopping to a specific place that deals with cancer patients. Um, because first of all, I don't want to go wig shopping. I didn't really feel that good on Sunday So I picked a place that is for people with cancer just to be in a little bit more comfortable environment. And of course, I brought my girls with me. I brought Candace and Becca, and naturally we made a show out of it. Um, I still got to put together this TikTok because it's going to be ridiculous. But we took pictures and we laughed at how insane I looked. And the lady was so nice. Um, Yeah. So we made the most of it and I did get a wig and it's a synthetic one, which means it's fake hair. It's not real hair. Wigs can be really expensive. My insurance does cover a little bit of it though, which is nice because it's technically considered a prosthesis, which is like a fake body part, which my boobs are considered that too, which is wild. But, um, yeah, I got a wig and it's short. It's like shoulder length and it kind of has my curl And I should be able to part said wig in the middle or to the side. And it's a nicer synthetic one. So it's not, you know, the one that you would get for your friend's bachelorette party. Um, But yeah, so I got one and it feels weird. It feels fine. I don't know. You know, the dream is that I never have to use it, but also not to be naive that I may have to. And I was really glad that I brought friends with me and they were great. So Got that done. Um, Later in the week, I went to physical therapy and my physical therapist is amazing. Her name is Stephanie and she immigrated from the, oh, I can't exactly remember where she immigrated from right now and I don't want to get it wrong. So I'll say it later, but um, to the United States to practice physical therapy. And she actually used to live in the freaking region which if you've been a long time listener, you know that I'm a region rat. The region is this area in Northwest Indiana that's on central time. We love to pretend we are in Chicago. We are not, but I'm a very proud region rat. Hashtag 219. But she used to live in the region when she first got to the United States. And I was like, what are the freaking chances? And specifically, she used to live in the Mansards, which are an apartment complex in Griffith, which I don't know if still exists. Probably, maybe, I don't know. But anyways, I knew exactly where she freaking lived. So that was super cool to learn that about her. And then they moved to Indy, which is how she is where she is now. Um, But she's just amazing. And it reminded me that we should always have open arms in this country to accept anyone who wants to come here to literally make this country a better place. It was just beautiful hearing her story. And it reminded me of somebody else I know, which would be my all-time favorite physical therapist, Luis Prado, which if you, oh, I wasn't doing the podcast at the time, but in 2016, I had a second ACL and meniscus repair surgery. And I actually moved to the region for a month to have the surgery done with 
a surgeon I was familiar with and then the PT done by him because he's so good. He's that good. But he also moved to the United States from another country for physical therapy. So what a beautiful place we have when we welcome others. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, that's my that's my two cents on that. When I walked into physical therapy on Thursday, when I tell you that I have been inundated with cancer merch, I have been inundated with cancer merch, right? I looked for my own, didn't find anything I liked. So I made my own. I've been given gifts. I've seen gifts marketed to me on Amazon and on Instagram. I have never seen anything like what I saw last week. (laughs) I saw at my physical therapy office, a cancer voodoo doll, a voodoo doll. (laughs) Like how funny and amazing is a voodoo doll. And actually I want to pull up the picture. If you're not watching this on YouTube, um, of what the voodoo doll said (laughs) on its chest, (laughs) because of course it had a little, um, a little mantra on it. Okay, here it is. It says, damn it, cancer. Cancer, you can't get me down. I won't let you do it. I'm a survivor and won't let you win. I am going to rise above the pain and fear, victorious and wise. You're not welcome here. Damn it, damn it, damn it. (laughs) And it's from a place called dammitcancer.com. And I have yet to explore this brand, but it's spelled D-A-M-M-I-T cancer.com. But just so funny. Like what, what are the chances that this is the merch that exists? A cancer voodoo doll. Oh, so that was quite hilarious. All right. My last thing I want to tell you is a life lesson I learned this week. I met up spontaneously with a friend for dinner. And I say spontaneously because usually this person and I have to plan like weeks in advance. We're both really busy, et cetera, et cetera. And I had hit him up the day before and said, hey, do you want to go to dinner tomorrow? I'm feeling so good. Like I have a normal appetite. I'd love to catch up. My energy's super high. And he was like, yeah, actually I'm free. Let's do it. And so I had a few errands to run. I was like, I'll be in this area. Like, where do you want to go to eat? And he goes, oh my God, no, you pick. And I'm like, okay, sure. So this person loves Harry and Izzy's. And if you're not from the Midwest, Harry and Izzy's is a bomb steakhouse. They're known for their shrimp cocktail, which I don't really care for because I just don't like that food. But they have just bomb food, bomb food. And they're a little pricier and they're much fancy. They're much fancier than normal than what I would go to. You know, I'm kind of a, I could be a Chili's girl any day of the week. And as I'm looking around, I'm like, oh, should we go here, here? And I was like, you know what? He loves Harry and Izzy's and I'm celebrating. He's celebrating like there does not have to be a huge moment in your life to celebrate. So I text him and I'm like, dude, should we go to Harry and Izzy's? Like, should we do this thing up? And he was like, yeah, sure, man. And so this person has overcome a lot personally recently and I'm in the middle of fighting cancer. So I was like, yeah, we're going. So we went to Harry and Izzy's. The waitress asked us what we were celebrating and we gladly told her and we had an incredible meal and we sat there for two hours just talking about life and obstacles and challenges and fears and what we hope in the future. And I haven't caught up with this person in a while. So it was just so beautiful and delicious. And I ate my whole freaking meal. I got scallops like a bougie ass bitch. And I ate my entire side of mashed potatoes and I had a fabulous drink. And it just like, now that I know what a chemo hangover feels like, at least for round one, and I know what it like feels like to feel normal, I am going to celebrate the out of my normal days. And it just reminds me of how we should just always do that. Like what, why not? Why not go to Harry and Izzy's? Why not get the drink? Why not get the side of mashed potatoes and eat the whole fucking thing? Like obviously there's dietary reasons not to do that, but you know what I mean? Like I almost held back from celebrating everyday life and 
that should be a celebration. We, we should do these things that feel monumental and they can be monumental to you. Okay. My last life lesson that I want to share here. And I think I shared it last time, maybe not, but it's, it's worth repeating. A lot of people have said to me, Hey, like, you know, I haven't known what to say to you. You're going through so much. Like, I don't know the words. I don't know the quote. I don't know what to give you or send you. And, you know, not to compare myself to you, but I'm also going through this. And I would encourage you not to say those things. Your 100 pounds on your shoulder can be a lot different than my 100 pounds. And I can, we can define those things differently, right? So if you want to approach me or talk to me, please don't preface it with, I know you have a lot going on and I can't compare, but listen to this. Just please know, like, I want to listen to what's going on in your life. I don't give a shit if it was because your dog chewed up your favorite shoes of Nikes. Wait, oh my God. (laughs) Favorite pair of Nikes or you're going through a divorce, like, Your heavy is not my heavy, is not the next person's heavy, is not that. So do not apologize for it. And honestly, I will welcome your problems. I'd love to listen to anything but my own cancer situation right now. So tell me the hard things. Tell me what's going on. I want to know. And don't apologize for it. Don't make it small. Don't minimize it. You can tell me. You can tell me. And this life lesson has actually inspired me because... Um, I've had people around me who have gone through really hard things like a loss of a parent or a divorce at a young age. And I have not known what to say to them. I am not qualified. I've never been through that. So I've said nothing. And I realized that saying nothing is worse. Um, and I'll say that from my own experience, people who haven't reached out to me because they don't know what to say to me, or they don't know the perfect words. Like it's worse if you say nothing. Um, so this week, I am going to do some reaching out to people who I have not known what to say to. And I would encourage you to do the same. And I'll be honest, if that person is me, (laughs) um, I'm going to encourage you right now, please do not send me anything else. I have been so loved and so cared for and given so many things. I, my cup overflows. If you want to do anything, I would encourage you to go buy a piece of merch you can Venmo me $5, but that's it, $5, and sponsor my Cancer Friday coffee walk with that $5, or do a random act of kindness and then tag me on Instagram and tell me what you did. Like, that's, that, all of that means the same to me as a million dollars. Like, don't write me a million dollar check. (laughs) I'll probably never say that again in my life, but Truthfully, I've been so supported and so fortunate that those are the things you can do. So thank you again for listening. Thank you for supporting me. And I've got chemo number two tomorrow. So wear your F or fight cancer merch. Tag me on Instagram and your social media so I can see you. And we'll keep going. So far, the battle is chemo zero, Sarah one. So I'm hoping to make it chemo zero, Sarah two.